Hello YouTubers, Jim from Ohio here with another update on my solar system. Um, for those of you who have been watching my channel for a while, you'll probably see a difference on the board behind me. I used to have the white uh, PIP controller here that was an off-grid controller, and I had that connected to some batteries that was on a shelf down below me. Um, I did remove the batteries and the PIP controller uh, for a couple different reasons. Uh, those who have been following my channel for a while know that at one point in time I talked about connecting a generator transfer switch to my uh, circuit breaker panel in my house and running some of the circuits that I have off-grid uh, in a full-time fashion running from the batteries. I wasn't able to do that with the circuit breaker circuit breaker panel that I have installed correctly because it was one of the old push-o-matic circuit panels and the wires were just crammed so tightly in there I really didn't have enough room to put the additional wiring for the uh, transfer switch. So rather than installing a new panel here uh, I just didn't want to waste the time or effort or money to do that because we only plan on staying in the house for another year or two before moving to a more permanent, um, a more permanent house that uh, we're looking for a smaller house. We'd like to have more land, but a smaller house. It's just my wife and I now, and we just don't need all the space we have in our current house. So um, I did uh, put the batteries up for sale, and those all were sold on eBay. They went out the door pretty quick. And the PIP controller I have set aside. My plan for the future is to buy maybe a Nissan Leaf battery or a Chevy Volt battery and uh, try to upscale the battery system a little bit higher, uh, a little more, more uh, power than I had in the past. And at that point in time, I'll hook up the generator transfer switch wherever I land. But for now, to replace that inverter, I went ahead and installed a second one of these blue grid tie inverters. And this is another 1000 watt inverter. Uh, it is connected to a separate uh, circuit in the house. I now have uh, this one on one leg and this one on the other leg. So I've got uh, a good amount of power coming in off of it. I've been able to generate over the last few days since I've installed it. Uh, I've been averaging about 8 to 10 kilowatts uh, per day between the two different systems combined. Now those are connected to, each of these are connected to uh, four 255 watt panels that are out in my yard. Uh, so I'm not using all of the panels at the time because I had um, eight of those panels connected to the PIP controller that were used for charging the batteries. So we'll work on getting that set back up whenever I land, wherever I am going to land. But in the meantime, I did want to address a couple of the uh, questions that I've gotten online since putting up my initial videos and uh, just kind of give everybody an update to where I am. Uh, I do want to mention that uh, all of the information that I posted about the uh, safety devices that are connected to this device here. Uh, all of that is still relevant information and if you go look up uh, my grid tie inverter video with the safety features uh, you'll see how this was wired in and all of the different items that you can buy to add this into your own install. Uh, since this was kind of a quick setup I did not go with any of those uh, safety features on the uh, AC side or the, the side that this feeds the network or my home grid. Uh, I did have the external safety devices. I do have the uh, quick disconnect uh, for where the solar comes in the house and then I have the lightning protection as well as the uh, circuit breaker uh, again for the power coming into the house but for the power coming out of this inverter uh, I didn't see a need to spend the, uh, the time and the money into putting into that since it is uh, more or less a temporary solution that will probably only run for about a year or so. Um, so between the two of these I'm getting excellent power production and uh, I'm real happy with that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move behind the camera and uh, that way I'll be able to zoom in on a couple items that I'd like everybody to kind of focus their attention on. A number of people have asked me how to configure the settings for these grid tie inverters. And so hopefully everybody will be able to see what I've got going on here. 
the first thing that I would like to say is I do, because I have the same panels feeding both of these inverters, meaning I have four 255 watt panels feeding this inverter and four 255 55 watt panels feeding this inverter and they are the same manufacturer panels with exactly the same readings. Uh, I do have both of these set exactly the same. Uh, you will hear the fan spinning up every once in a while and that's simply the cooling fan because these have been uh, running all day. It's late in the afternoon now and, and you can see on this one I'm uh, putting out a little over 600 watts. Uh, this one I'm only putting out about 140 watts and that's because right now uh, there is no additional load uh, that this one can possibly feed right now. Now I do want to mention that these devices are known for having a problem with these displays. So for anybody using these devices I would highly highly recommend that you configure this display to turn off when you're not using it. And that's a simple uh, fix. What you do is you go into the uh, settings screen here. Uh, that's the one with the little gear. And when you go in there, this second checkbox down is what, uh, what you would turn off. I have it turned on just for the purpose of uh, recording this video, but Typically, I'll leave that box unchecked. Uh, but the settings that I use on these, uh, the uh, upper box here is the limit. Uh, and I do leave the limiter running at all times because I don't want to accidentally feed any power back to the grid. Um, I am using the internal limiter. So that's the limiter that's built into this device and it utilizes this cable. Uh, there's two cable inputs. This is used if you're going to use an external limiting device. However, I'm using the internal one that's built into this grid tie inverter, so I'm uh, connected to the uh, internal limiter side. And that goes over, and I've got a couple wires that are right here that go into my circuit breaker panel and that's where I have the uh, limiter sensor uh, clamp that's uh, connected onto the uh, legs that feed my power panel. Um, so uh, going through the settings a little bit more, uh, so I talked about the internal limiter and I've got it in limit mode. Uh, and then as far as these settings down here, um, I have those disabled. I'm not running any battery system to this device. I don't want to limit it so that, uh, so that it doesn't feed all of the power that I produce uh, back into my home. So I don't have that limited at all. So I have this box unchecked and this box unchecked, which disables all of these settings over here. Uh, the only thing that... Uh, is uh, set up is this number right here which I have on the default settings which is uh, currently set for 440 which basically is at 44 volts this device gets enabled. Now I am running one of the higher voltage units uh, there are two models of this that's for sale uh, one of them I think is the uh, I, I forget what the voltage is, but it goes up to 44 volts. I think it's like 24 to 44 or 22 to 44. This unit, however, and this unit uh, operate on 45 to 90 volts. And that is all based on the amount of power that is coming in from my uh, solar panels. My solar panels uh, run uh, uh, typically at right around uh, 60 to 70 volts and so in the morning as soon as I hit 44 volts uh, this device should come in come on and start uh, converting that DC power to AC and feeding it back into the house. Now the other thing that I wanted to talk about is um, initially when I set these devices up uh, I had a problem with this reading right here. Now this is the amount of power that's being produced in watts. Uh, this is the amount of power 
that is being fed from the grid. So right now uh, I'm using 631 watts plus 75 watts uh, in my home on this leg of my circuit panel uh, and I'm currently getting 81 volts or 81 watts from the grid. The rest of that is coming from solar. I had a problem with this number before. It was not reading right and what I narrowed that down to was it was actually the clamp that I was using. Um, because I live in the United States, uh, the clamp that comes with these devices are usually not big enough to fit on a hundred amp uh, circuit or a hundred amp cable. The, the cable just is, it's a very very large cable and the clamp would not fit on it. So I had replaced it with what I thought was a good uh, rated uh, sensor, but I did find out later on that it was the sensor clamp that was the problem and uh, I'll post a picture right here right now with what you need to order if you're running in the United States or if you're running uh, in any country that uh, uses power uh, in a similar fashion to way, the way that our panels are here in the U.S. with uh, two legs coming in. Uh, so I have uh, actually a 200 amp circuit breaker panel and those two 100 amp legs that come in. Uh, if you're overseas and you're running 220 volts rather than two 110 volt legs then you probably don't have to worry about that and you can probably go ahead and use the clamp that came with it. But. Uh Um, anyway, that's the update that I have for now. If anyone has any further questions or I haven't explained anything uh, in an understandable fashion, feel free to leave me a question down below and I'll try to answer that as soon as I can. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, if you're enjoying my videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up and uh, be sure to describe and uh, hit that bell notification so whenever I post more videos, uh, you'll receive them right in your inbox. Thank you much. We'll talk with you later.